<laughs> I should maybe have a backup here, hey, Keith? Yeah, I used to have one stuck to my guitar. I used to have a... Oh, maybe that was me. That was me. I think that was me. Yeah, that was me. That's channel 27. There we go. How are you doing, Dan? Am I getting that ending right? My despair and cry, cry, cry. if it were not live. Church in the Wildwood and G. Ready? Keep it rolling, remember.
which is next love left in me this one's called love left in me Thank you. <coughs> Seek ye first. 
in D. D. The cure of gear of D, yep. Okay. A little faster. A little faster. Start out here a little faster. Day, a little bit of getting the voices going. Okay. Sharon's all good. Tim's all good. Very good. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here with you in worship today. We're having a little fun on the band a little bit, and uh, we're going to be using Source of the Word from the With One Voice. Uh, the hymns are from the ELW, though, the, the hymnal. Uh, today uh, is, is what is the day? The 20, what, back that up a little bit, please. What is that? Oh, that's all right. Something like the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. How about that for a guess? Doesn't say here on this sheet. So anyway, okay. What is it? The 25th. There you go. Thank you. The 25th. So uh, we're going to begin with our gathering hymn, My Lord, What a Morning, the number 438 from the red hymnal or up on the screen. Begin to fall. 
You will hear the trumpet sound to wake the nations on the ground. Looking to God's right hand, when the stars begin to fall. To my God's right hand, let the stars begin to fall. Lord, what a morning! Lord, what a morning! Oh, Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall, you will hear the Christian shout to wake the nations on the ground. Look into the God's right hand when the stars begin to fall. So yes, we're using service of the word today. It's in there in the With One Voice, page 46, or again up on the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are the treasured people of the Lord. A people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are home, and when you are away, when you lie down, and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Our scripture song. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ alone forever and ever. Great and wonderful are our deeds, all glory of the universe. Just and true, always, all the nations. Who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing the glory of your name? Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ alone forever and ever. For you alone are the holy. Nations will adore and worship before you, for our just and lovely works have been revealed. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ alone forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, God, your sovereign purpose purpose brings salvation to birth. birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
I invite you to be seated and we'll continue with our first lesson. Thank you to Karen for reading today. The first lesson is found in 1 Samuel, verse 1, 4 to 20. On that day well, when, Le when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Pinanah and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year after year, as, do, as often as she went to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk, at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant but will give to your servant a male child. Then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall neither drink wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But H Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I've been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She called him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll have some special music by Saved by Grace. This is called, It Is No Secret. Kind of goes with what Hannah's doing there today.
Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for our gospel acclamation. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all glory to you. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. Our hearts burn within us while you open to us the scriptures. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all glory to you. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives off, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign that these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines, but this is this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. If there's any young ones here that want to come join me up front for a children's message, you are most welcome to do that. So, want to build something here today want to build something so when Jesus when Jesus and the disciples were coming out of the temple today right they uh, said what large stones what large stones what large buildings they're rebuilding the temple and so this is a uh, a time for Jesus to talk about what he's building but I want, what I want you to do today is help me build so never guess where I got these bricks from. So, one brick. I'm going to build two bricks. Okay. Three bricks. How am I supposed to do this? Off, offset it like that? Yeah. Okay. And then maybe like that again. Well, that's not going to work. You know, I, gotta, I should have more out here, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. Well, this just isn't all sticking together here like it should. It's all going to fall apart on me. What's going on? I'm going to try. And that one's going to fall. And this one's going to fall. Uh, I don't know. What's wrong? Oh, no. Yes. I do. I had a motor shell. <laughs> I had mortar, that's right. I did something to make these stick together. And so the way you set a brick, I didn't bring my trowel. But anyways, you have mortar, you slop it on, right? And you stick them together, and then there's a space in between. And when they stick together, there's cement and sand in the mortar, and it makes it stick. And then you get it just right, and then you smear over the top here, and then you put on the next layer and you tap it down so it's nice and level you know and then you just keep building that way and same thing if you keep building however you do it even if you put another one on top you'd put more water put that on top more water 
put that on top, always scraping off the excess and making it straight and tap, tap, tap and making it just right, okay? Mortar. I didn't bring mortar today because I thought that would be a little messy. But anyway, the idea of what I want to talk about is in our lives, we try to build things, but it doesn't work without Jesus. It doesn't work. Nothing sticks together. Whatever we try and do just doesn't last. And Jesus is kind of like that in the mortar. The in behind, always worth impossible to do without. That's who Jesus is in our lives. And on Jesus, we can build our lives. On Jesus, we can build uh, hope. We, we, we can have hope, sorry. And we can build our lives in hope. We can depend on Jesus, and Jesus will never let us go. The mortar will never break. That's who Jesus is in our lives. And so may today we be encouraged to stick with Jesus, or that Jesus would stick with us our whole lives through. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, that shows us the way through all things. We pray that you, uh, your, your grace sticks to us. Your forgiveness sticks to us wherever we go. May your Holy Spirit be with us. And may Jesus always, always connect the dots in our lives so that whatever is not making sense, Jesus will bring to light and uh, to truth. We ask it in his name. Amen. Okay. Jesus is talking today about these, this building, the large buildings and stones. And, and uh, we had a good conversation in our Bible study this week too about some of the things that we build. And I'm, I want to get some feedback here. Make sure you shout it out because these ears just aren't what they used to be. But what are some of the human structures that we see that we, that, that we think are unmovable, the constants in our society, perhaps? Any thoughts on some of that? What structures or things do we have in place that we don't think we can get around? Any, any thoughts? A grand band. A grand band. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It is solid. It is. It is solid, that structure. And uh, you know, one day it will fall. Yep, it will fall. Any other thoughts? The dam? In the reservoir of water? Yeah, I'm going to open the Duncan Dam doesn't, doesn't break and flood my house. But anyway, <laughs> will it happen? Oh boy, do I have to say yes? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, water is an issue and dams break, right? Storms happen. We've seen things happen last year with storms and water overcoming dams and just simply wiping things out that no one thought would ever happen. Water flowed over uh, across from in Nevada and water flowed over the land when a dam broke that no one saw water flow before. Huh. So who knows? Dams don't hold everything back. <coughs> More ideas. The political system. Absolutely. I mean, there's, uh, we have this huge assumption that it will always be, and it's always something that also um, well, sometimes gets in our way. In Jesus' time, the political also is getting in his way. Uh, when he says you know, all these stones will crumble and all this will fall down. The politicians aren't too happy about it. Neither are the priests because they're building this temple to be the center of all things, the utmost of the utmost. And that's the goal is everything will come to Jerusalem. The temple will be built and uh, it will be the center, Jerusalem and the temple and all will be good and well. And this is their goal and an expectation. Revelation says a new Jerusalem will arise. 
a new temple will rise. And Jesus says, this will crumble. And they use it against him in the trial when they're crucifying him. They use that against him in the trial and really accuse him of terrorism that he will tear down the temple. The temple does fall in 70 CE. Uh, it does, not by Jesus' hand, but uh, by other, other forces. So the politics and the dynamics going on there are huge, huge, huge. And uh, to, to get around them seems sometimes insurmountable. How, where do we go? How do we, how do we move forward, right? Uh, well, what, what holds us back? What about assumptions, things like that? What are some of your assumptions in the world? So when, you, when you're young, I don't know what's your assumption. You'll well, pass grade 12, I suppose. Uh, maybe someday you'll get married, have 2.5 kids, a dog, a cat, and, and all that. But you know, that's the society that we kind of plant in everybody's mind, right? It does not have to be that way. You know, that's, that's what we build as humanity. And uh, Jesus walks through such things. Hannah in the Old Testament today, uh, she's barren. She's barren and not feeling. She's the most beloved by her husband, but she can't have a child. Interesting. So she's the most loved, but feels lesser because she can't have a child. And so Hannah's assumption is to be uh, you know, fully a woman, she needs to have this child and to bear her husband a child. And so she dedicates the, or promises the child will, will be dedicated to the Lord and be a Nazarite. And the prophet says, let it be so, if it's God's will. And what seemed absolutely impossible rose up from what seems nothing a prophet that would serve the land. So God can do a lot of things. What is God building? Okay, what is God building through, the pro through Hannah, through the prophet Samuel? What is God building through the disciples? What is, God, what is Jesus building with the disciples while he's on earth with them? What, what, is, what is the bigger picture? Okay. And even when we start looking at some of that bigger picture uh, of this text, when you look at the location, it's the temple, and then they're in the mount, uh, on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple. And what happens in those spaces in not too far distant future in the scripture? The trial, the betrayal, the arrest, all of that happens. And Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the, 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 the city that kills its prophets. Jesus knows these things, and, but he's trying to build a new thing, not based on the temple, not based on something that gets built up and you knock it down. It's like playing Jenga almost, the temple. The temple is they build it up and someone pushes <laughs> out a block and it all falls down, and they build it up and someone pushes out a block and it all falls down, and you'd wonder, okay, we've got to do something different here. The new covenant in Christ is something different. God is building in Christ a whole new way of being. A whole new way of being. And so in our lives, uh, what we see, it's easy for us to see it now, but what God is building at the time in Jesus, this idea of the temple and, and the Mount of Olives, is we're looking at the, the crucifixion and what no one expected, no one could assume, no one could foresee, God raises Jesus from the dead. Not one person would have assumed that when Jesus was, was crucified that he was going to live again. He was going to rise again. And so what God is building in Christ and this whole idea of Jesus being the high priest of Melchizedek in the seat forever, that's who Jesus is as our high priest placed uh, in the place to forgive our sins and nothing can break that down. Nothing. Nothing. No human structure, no human building, no human thoughts. Nothing can tear that down. And that's the good news in Christ. 
That is the good news. I gotta tell a couple sick jokes here because that's what I do. Okay, my top three assumptions when the doorbell rings. Okay, my top three assumptions when the doorbell rings. Number one, it's a murderer. Number two, the police telling me everyone is dead. Or number three, that book I ordered about positive thinking. <laughs> what are our assumptions? What are our expectations in life? What is getting in your way? What, what can't you get around? People say I make too many assumptions. I mean, they don't say it, but I know they're thinking it. Yeah. What do we build in our own mind? What do we think about? And there are 10 types of people. Okay, there are 10 types of people. Those who understand binary and those who don't. There are, the other eight are able to appreciate that binary is a numeric system that most people don't properly understand. And therefore, the assumption in this joke is that there will be 10 types of people, not two. Not two. Okay, a biologist, a physicist, and a mathematician are standing in front of an empty building they think is empty. They think it's empty. They see two people go in, and after several hours, they see three people leave. The biologist says they must have procreated. The physicist says our initial assumption about the building must have been incorrect. And the mathematician says if one more person enters that building, it'll be empty again. Bad, eh? Yeah. So, how we look at things, how we view things, right? What approach do we take? Uh, logically, mathematically, uh, you know, uh, uh, more Im Im imaginative, these types of things. Uh, this one, I've started wearing a stethoscope around my neck. So if there's a medical emergency, I get to teach people a valuable lesson about making assumptions based on someone's appearance. Yeah. Just because they're wearing a stethoscope doesn't make them a doctor, nurse, whatever. So these things that we have, well, there's lots of assumptions in our lives that we can and cannot do. And Jesus is coming and does this with the disciples, continually breaking these things down, continually saying, that is not a wall. That is something we can easily get over. In the resurrection, there is forgiveness. Sometimes uh, uh, what, the things that we do seem like they're insurmountable. But God in Christ can overcome them easily. God, in, God, God built in Christ can overcome all things. And so, you know, we assume, we were just doing something this morning about someone, uh, and uh, it was kind of funny this morning because there's the potential to say, well, maybe we said something wrong. Well, maybe we did something else. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're mad at us. And I was just laughing inside going to my wife. I said, you just got to wait to hear the sermon today because... <laughs> Because the things we build in our brains, the ideas we build, the assumptions we have, right? No, may they be built on Christ. May we be set free, right? May our thoughts be based on Christ, built on Christ, built on the resurrection, right? The, the, the resurrection that gives hope and life through all things. There's absolutely nothing, just like the song, that God can't do. There's nothing that God can't do. And that's for each and every one of us. That's for us collectively. Hang on to your shirts. In fact, when our expectations and assumptions are thwarted, the ones that Jesus has, the expectations and assumptions and the plans and things that Jesus is building is far greater, far better to pursue. And it includes God's grace, God's promises, God's future. May our hope and expectations lie there in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
hit of the day, built on a rock, number 652, out of the red hymnal. I invite you to rise as you're able. salvation we believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised holy spirit living together in trust and hope we confess our faith i believe believe in in god God, the The father Father almighty Almighty, creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ Christ, his only son our lord Lord. he was conceived by the the power of the holy Holy spirit Spirit, and and born of the virgin Mary. mary He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have Have mercy mercy on us. us. In your your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. To all at home as well, peace be with you. I invite you to be seated after... In our offering, I want to mention that uh, this... This week, starting, starting today and all this next week, will be food bank week again. So we're once again going to be collecting food for the food bank. Those items of interest, especially for the food for the Salvation Army, I believe is on the back table there. I believe Connie put it on the back table. So if you're looking for a list, you can also go to the website and look under announcements for the list that was there a few Sundays ago for all the items that they run out of, okay? And so you can go in there, and so may that be a part of our offering this week. We're going to remain seated as we sing our offertory. Glory to you, God, for yours is the earth, yours the earth and the radiant world. Ours the rejoicing for spirits of flame. Ours the thanksgiving to your holy Ours be the time of days greatly done. Yours be the glory. Oh God, yours alone. Let us pray. God, our Creator, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. 
as the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate, bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, wildfires, pandemics, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, O oh God, we lift these, your people, to you, Ted Reeves, Melvin Larson, Connie Angel, Norma Erickson, Martha Rooney, Helen McGovern, Ruby Martinson, Deanne Larson, Dorothy Carlton, Arnold Lang, Sammy Khalif, Marianne Wagner, Shirley Wengel, Joyce Olison, Eric Oliver, Lloyd and Erla Meyer, Glenn Moan, Faye Silser. In our care facilities, Lori Dombrowski, Burnett and Arlene Olson, Rose Poe, Margaret Dick, Jean White, Clarence Lenz, Artis Wall, Jean Garthus, Marlene Arndt, John and Drinda Koenig, Val Morstead and Tracy Moan, Ellie Moe, Ed and Edna Hapke, Irene Sunby, Ruby Wengel, Evelyn Semft, Lillian Bazandowski, Jean Straub and Gladys Moan, Martha Weinbender, Jenny Fontaine, Marion Soberg and Margaret Elias. We lift these, your people, to you, O oh God, part of your building up in Christ, and we lift them to you for comfort, strength, and healing. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries Angela Doan, Chelsea Palaschak, Haley Horning, Ben Unger, and Isabel Swanson. And anniversaries, Blade and Nicole Davy. For the gift of life and love, O oh God, we continue to pray. And we pray also for the families, the, the young couples that were in our premarital program the last couple of days. We lift them to you, O oh God, and pray that you will bless them and keep them united in your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those working along beside us in ministry. We think of Faith Evangelical Missionary Church today and how we walk along beside each other, also with the refugee families. We pray for the new refugee family coming in December, December 3rd, and we pray that you would empower us, uh, help us to share our time and talents, and volunteer so all may hear your good news, all may be comforted, all may be fed. God, in your mercy. Hear our God, our beginning and end, your beloved people, no, sorry, God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you for all whom we pray, remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn, Give to Our God, Immortal Praise, number 848. for a few announcements. So, uh, things going on this week, uh, the food bank week, as I mentioned, for the offering. Um, this next couple of weeks, I'm going to be on holidays, so Pastor Linda will be available for all things. So the Bible study, we'll just have to use your wisdom and uh, meet together still for the conference call. I'm sure you can all do a fine job of, of getting through those Bible studies. Quilting Wednesdays is, is on Wednesdays all the time, uh, so please come out for that. Uh, the next couple of weeks, no confirmations, because I won't be here. Uh, November 18th, so that's uh, this week as well, Thursday, pierogi making. For more information, contact Patty. Uh, so pierogi making. I believe it's all it's stuffed up to be. <laughs> all right. And if you're interested in making lefsa, call the office and leave name and number so we can get back to you. So it sounds like there's some interest in, in uh, also making lefsa. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Well, we're going to send you out with, well, don't fly away, but you're we're, that's what we're going to do. Fly away. I'm getting there. <laughs> Thank you. 
thanks be to God. God.